Okay, so just like we've seen the Stranger Thing thumbnails try to figure out how to put the type with the illustration, I have to do some blocking sketches to figure out how I want type to work with my spot illustration or with my logo or with whatever I'm going to make my poster with. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go to my, my multi-layered, if possible, a file from assignment seven. And then I'm just going to really simplify it. I'm going to turn off the background. So I just see the checkerboard. And then I'm just going to merge everything above it. I'm holding down shift. I'm going to layer, merge layer. So now I just have one layer with my full illustration. So it's just another design layer. Then I'm going to save as a PSD. So I don't want to overwrite my old design stuff. I go to my downloads right away. So it's going to be not a spot illustration project anymore. It's going to be, so the first thing before doing your blocking sketch is you want to set your format, right? So we have an empty background right now, but I get to decide what size and shape is my poster going to be. And if I go to image canvas size, I can make this not a square anymore, not an eight, eight by eight inch square like I was doing before at 350 pixels per inch. But I'm going to make it more like, more typical, probably like nine inches wide by 12 inches tall. That's a good art standard, right? And this gives me more of a poster format to work with. I'm going to turn on the white background, but I'm going to unlock it, and I'm going to say edit fill with white. at 100%. Whoops, I filled the wrong layer. Okay, so now I want to figure out what kind of space do I have around my illustration. Everyone's illustration is different. Some of yours are horizontal, some of yours are vertical, some of yours are blocky, some of them are really organic. Mine is very vertical. And this is a lot of white space floating around. So when I'm thinking about type, you can try blocking in a few different ways. This is one method, just taking kind of a middle gray rectangle, right? Just a shape tool, and just trying placing the blocks and seeing how they look. So to move it over the top, right. So I could do kind of very typical poster blocking. I can make a duplicate of that and have type Go in above and below, and I can think, okay, what type do I want? Do I want it to say good point? I thought that was kind of clever. Good tip. Um, good luck. I think I, I want it to say good point. I think that's kind of the, the most clever. So I could have good up here and point down here, but does this really use the space well? I feel like there's too much here and too much here. So let's duplicate again. Do Control T, not Command T, to rotate it. And if you rotate while holding down Shift, it will give you kind of major angles. So what if I put it to the side? So this is called column blocking. If I duplicate that again. So if I had text in all of these blocks, that would overwhelm my um, illustration. So I could have vote 
2020 good luck, you know, but that would be too much. So instead, I think I want to focus on these two side columns and see what it looks like with just those as my blocking. Now, typically, I don't do this digitally. Typically, I just do it with a sheet of paper and a pencil, right, like I, I have here. But you can do lots of different variations. So yes, this has some good potential. But now maybe I want to play with it in a slightly more interesting way. So I'm going to rasterize these. And I could just draw with my pen tool too. But I really want you to get the sense that I'm not writing the letters. I'm designing the space and the shape in which, in which the letters will occur. And now I'm going to try messing with these a little bit. I'm going to use the polygonal lasso. And I'm going to set these at slight angles for blocking. It's OK if it's messy and sketchy. Oops, that's why. <laughs> ah. Come on, close up. Okay, darn. Okay, so what I'm going to do is duplicate and have like a more complicated shape that's kind of angular and it breaks up the space a little bit better. And then maybe I use control T, not command T. I have to keep reminding myself I'm not in Photoshop. And now I have this kind of more interesting shape that I can mess with. And maybe I like that dynamic a little bit more than just the solid column. And if that's true, then let me duplicate that. And I can decide, okay, do I want it to be kind of symmetrical? You know, where it's flipped. Do I like how that looks on the poster? Or do I want it to be Kind of more even like that. And I think I like that a little bit more. So this becomes some blocking for me. And I can mess with it more. I love these digital tools. I can do lots of variations. I can warp it. I can like try to bring out, get rid of the horizontals and verticals at the top and bottom, right? See if I like that. and just all kinds of variations. Now that's the beginning of the blocking sketch, figuring out your blocks. The next step, I'm just gonna do this, I'm just with a trackpad, and I'm gonna use white. I'm just gonna paint with white with a, a small brush, is you have to kind of then put in your text, right? So I know I want this to look kind of like a tattoo, so I'm thinking I'm going to have a G. I'm going to use all capitals because they space out well. But the G is going to be tilted like that. And then maybe an O. The O will be tilted. So hard to write with a trackpad. Then an O, but tilted the other way. 
and then the D. And then here, I'll have the P, and then the O, and then the I. I think I actually want the I to be vertical, and upright, kind of stabilizing. Because it needs kind of more space around it. And then the N, nope, this is why the blocking helps. Kind of see what makes it work readably, what makes it stand out. And then the T, T has a lot of negative space too, right? So that might be how I block it out. And I could try different versions. I could try versions that are really straightforward as well. But I, I'm interested in seeing if I can get this to work, right? It's a place to start. Okay, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna save this. This is my blocking sketch. And now I have to think, okay, if that's the space that goes along with my illustration, and I know I want kind of capitals, I want them to be big and bold, now I need to find a typeface to start with. And I will modify the typeface, but in the assignment you'll see I give you a link to text resources. And this is a, a site that's been around for a long time. It's where uh, typographers, type designers put their designs and offer them up for people to try, to advertise for them, and sometimes they just donate them for your free use. So you'll see here it says free for personal use, free for personal use, free for personal use. That means as long as you're not gonna use it to sell a product like a CD cover, a poster for a movie, then you can just use it for free. But if you wanna use it for, for something you're gonna make money on, then they ask that you buy it by supporting the, the artist and they'll give you the the ways you can purchase it for, through different sites, right? So no commercial use allowed for personal use ones. If you make money with my font, please purchase the license. And you can go through all that. But why is this site so helpful? Well, because you can just search different types of typeface. And I know I want something that's... So I know I want something that's tattoo-inspired. And once I spell it right, <laughs> I'll see that there are 82 different typefaces that are offered up. And I can see a lot of them, you know, they have different names, they have different sizes, there's four pages worth. Most of them are free for personal use. And some of them aren't even close to what I want, but freehand tattoo is pretty nice. Okay, this is a way you can help figure it out better. You have this nice little box here that says preview. So I'm going to type in good point in all capitals. And then I'm going to submit it. And then it will show me how that type will work in those letter forms. Oh, this one's beautiful. So maybe a little simplified a good point, but I like how narrow it is and how traditional it is. And you're not looking for the most elaborate one, you're looking for the one that's going to support your illustration the best. And I know I want mine to be somewhat blocky. It's not terrible. That's a little too ornate. The more ornate it gets, the harder it can be to read. So that's why it's really helpful. This one doesn't have capitals supported, right? It's only minuscule. So that one's really straightforward, really nice. Free for personal use. And they usually show up based on how recently they were uploaded, right? 
And you can see how many times 